one has consumed but now you are looking at your dimensional table saying krishna he is my newborn baby he consumed the 10 liters of milk which i am talking about that is you are attaching the dimensional value to the fact so what i am telling is you will have to first build your dimensional table and then only the fact can be recorded so does it make sense now you understand what is stub stub what i am talking about you are stubbing the dimensional table before you insert the uh, actual transaction in the fact table make sense guys krishna are you clear there perfect So, anyone else guys, you have any other questions on that or are you clear? Okay. So, the third workflow is meant to load data from uh, from your uh, stage table to target. This is where you are going to apply the entire business logic. Whether you have the second workflow or not, your recipe is going to happen only here in your kitchen stadium. Till your stage, what you did is you got raw vegetables, cut it, made it ready there now is the actual cooking part you are going to heat the pan add the oil in it you are going to add the uh, spices or the flavorings and and put the vegetables and add uh, salt sugar or whatever you, you have to do the recipe based on that you are going to add and finally come up with a recipe if it is a roti you come up with a different curry if it is rice you come up with a different curry that is the business logic so you have to be uh, very careful when you design these workflows because finally after the recipe is cooked, after the curry is manufactured or, or cooked, you can't change it. You can add little salt and little pepper to it, but you cannot change the original flavor of the vegetable. You cannot change the spices. You cannot change the sourness in it. So definitely you will have to be very careful because you are committing to the target. Once the data is in target, it is not your play area. Any play, play uh, you can do or the net practice or any 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 uh, adventures you can do is in your stage environment. Few of the locations you will see stage to intermediate. It is the same uh, life cycle way of doing it. You stage the data, you transformed it and store it into a temporary location called as intermediate table. That is what I was talking about. The second optional workflow. You will stage it. After that, you will transform it and put it into a temporary place, which is the intermediate. And from intermediate to final target, it is a straightforward node, one to one node. So there are a number of ways, but it is all again uh, subjective. It is subject to what the customer wants, how the data is in that organization, how good you, uh, you, I mean the best data if you have, you don't need to worry about cleansing it, transforming it, then directly you can uh, load it to the target with minimal uh, transformations and filter conditions. So the third workflow is meant to load the target. In a job at top level, it would be two or three workflows. All other workflows and data flows would embed in the other uh, uh, in, in one or the one of the main workflows. So externally you'll see only two to three workflows. But internally a workflow can have more than one workflow. A data flow can have more than one data flow. We are going to see that practically how we define it, how we design it. So in a job, all data flows would be within a workflow. So in general, the best practice is you can also have a data flow under a, under a job. You don't need a workflow. You can directly do a data flow under a job. But you will not have too much of business logic uh, put in there. All you are going to do is a straightforward pull from source to target. When the complexities come in, it turns as a chessboard. You will have to be very uh, tactical or practical in uh, doing that. So always it is suggested that you have any data flow inside a workflow. Do not put it outside the workflow. Finally, if you look at the workflows, they look like this. If you look inside a workflow, it has a start and end script. And within a workflow, here is the data flow. It has some uh, start scripts like analyze statements and end scripts. Uh, we'll come to that analyze and disabling indexes that when we really go into the job. But generally, if you, I mean, earlier I was showing you a high level uh, structure of a job here. Now I'm, I'm opening one of the workflows and I'm showing you how the workflow looks like internally. This is the content of a workflow. This is the content of a workflow. In a workflow, you'll see all this. 
but we are going to also look at it practically uh, today from our designer model. So no worries about it. So workflow and data flow guidelines. So as a best practice, I we define that follow these guidelines so that it is helpful for you. Uh, you will not face any issues while you are uh, while you are in battle. So each workflow shall hold only one data flow, which means each. <laughs> each chariot must only have one warrior do not try to hop too many people on the same chariot and uh, and uh, kill yourself so try to be like each workflow shall have only one data flow but it is not mandatory guys. you can actually practically speaking you'll have more data flows i mean uh, better uh, better example is not one more than one warrior having more horses into one chariot you can go independently each person on a horse and then fight but when you have a chariot better you have three or four horses there and then try to uh, go there so it depends upon what you are doing if you are an independent warrior uh, you have to have one workflow and a data flow inside it but what we are telling is a workflow is a mandatory thing put wrapper on top of the data flow you'll understand when you uh, when you actually design the jobs so each data flow is meant to load one target table. Here at least be specific. Do not try to load more than one table in a data flow because you cannot monitor. I mean when you kill a person in a battle, kill one person so that you know whom you kill. If you misfire it, that is a different story. But try to be uh, aiming at a particular table so that your life is easier. And there will be some exceptions. When I say load one target table, you will have so surely the rejection criteria and you will load the rejected data into a separate table that is not our target actually that is only for our framework purpose saying i have 100 records that i am trying to load 80 got loaded successfully you can also record the 20 into a flat file or into a separate table that is possible that will we'll talk about it when we really uh, design a job exceptions will always apply whatever the guidelines i am telling here are only uh, uh, are only kind of rules if I say definitely the rule is in residential area go at a speed of 25 miles, uh, will you follow? You will say there is no cop around, I am in urgency, I will go at 45 speed. In the same way, exceptions does apply. The transformations that does push down are to be encouraged. There are some transformations which can do a good push down operation. What is a push down operation? Try to understand what is a push down operation guys. Push down operation is kind of a fulcrum. If you are trying to move a huge block, how do you do it? If you do it with your own hands, 10 people even cannot lift a stone that is 100 kilos of weight. Or the fulcrum, the fulcrum is the push down operation. Try to put the weight onto that rod which you are using as a fulcrum and then move the stone, it is easier. So in the same way, the push down sequel is try to push down more, more process or or, uh, or or use the energy of a database rather than data services. You see, there is a trick here. Database is a huge thing when compared to a data service smaller repository because you are going to install the repository, you are going to you know, have your data services sitting in a very small environment which is only like uh, 2 gigabytes of memory for it and uh, 100 uh, gigabytes of, of hard disk for it. But when you look at a database, it is an independent server. It has a lot of CPUs, a lot of processors in it. So it is always encouraged that you use some transformation so that the actual work will happen in the database and you get only the output of it into your data services. But anyhow, well, what it means is to, to actually talk in a layman term, Cut the vegetables, I mean buy the cut vegetables instead of buying the raw vegetables, trying to feel them everything in your kitchen. It's the same way. Because in market they chop it, they chop the chicken really fast and easy. If you try to get the same chicken into your own environment, in your into your kitchen, the cleaning, cutting will take an, a, a hell lot of time. So massage, do everything, cut the chicken, clear, I mean get the clean chicken from market which is in the database it is possible really easy finally after you get it here make a few changes if you want to transform which means you want to marinate the chicken you want it to uh, cut it into even small pieces that you can do it in your data services environment so
so pick up those transformations that can push down that can push down the load onto database that is the intention of explaining all this so mandatory use of query transform there is one transform in your uh, data services if you look at the screen yesterday i was showing you a couple of transform in which query is the most important transform if you use the query transform then you achieve more push down onto the database and you have more control you are going to filter the unwanted data you can sort it you can order it you can group it everything is possible in query transform so if you do any kind of operation from source to target for sure use the query transform so very restricted use of sql transform as there is a sql transform which is a very rude way of doing it sql transform is is like you you write your own sql run it in the database it will get you an output and then use the data uh, load your target but definitely you can't scale things you cannot identify how many records it is reading in an sql transform all it will do is give the output of the query but it will not give you the statistics of the query performance wise sql transforms are sometimes killing they are going to kill the resources a lot and data services cannot monitor or help you uh, help you uh, to answer anything on an sql transform so always try to use uh, minimize or use it uh, in a very bad condition if you are able to write this logic in data services better write it in data services instead of doing it in sql transform so aim is to attain the full push down the first aim is any time when you design the job try to try to put all the uh, energy uh, or use the database resources more than data services resources that is what it is because data services is a small client based tool whereas database is a huge server so things can happen faster in the database so use that use aim at attaining full push down i mean buy as many as ready to cook vegetables instead of buying the vegetables cleaning and doing everything in your kitchen what we are trying is try to buy all the clean and cut vegetables from the market so that you can cook and start eating easily so avoid caching of data in lookup instead outer join the lookup okay lookup is one important thing guys you will have to actually put your brains intelligence to understand a lookup uh, lookup uh, what it means a lookup in generic sense lookup is you are going to look at something that is for sure but what you are going to look at it is the important question so let me go back to the same example which i gave you earlier i have every day some new products coming in uh, coming into market which i am selling but in my data warehouse if it is a new product only then i will have to record it in the dimension table if it is the same old product there is no change in the product it is the same uh, it is the same rinse soap we are seeing in market from 40 years the day one rinse soap is launched it is the same cover it is the same name it is the same brand so there is no change except that they keep advertising it in a different way so you don't need to add a product called rin again and again so instead you will do a look up on the dimension table and see if the incoming products already exist in the dimension table you are not going to insert them you you are going to uh, skip them so in data services to find that whether it is in your target already or not you have two ways you can do a database outer join or you can do a lookup lookup is a function which will fetch the data from target and uh, put it into data services and then try to look at every incoming row saying okay this product already exists this product doesn't exist this product already exists it will try to flag that way and then try to scrub it but the outer join is in database it will do it in database it will determine if this is a new product or not and finally only if it is a new product the data will come into data services and all we are trying to do is insert it into the table so there are two ways of doing it we will always look at uh, into the job how to do it but but if the volume of data is high better use the outer join instead of the lookup when the volume is small that is fine you can always use the lookup it is very efficient but if the data is going the for a million records do not try to use the lookup better you use the uh, outer join instead of a lookup these are the general instructions guys and and we are going to uh, we are going to take a break in another 10 minutes so people who are waiting for a break 
Please be patient. We have only a couple of more slides. So data service, go ahead. Uh, 